Hi, thank you very much for signing up to the Rencat platform. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload your first site and instantly get three prices from every single survey. So let's get started. Once you sign in to the Rencat platform, in order to upload a site, all you do is you go up here, click the upload site button, and then this new window opens up. And here you can provide all the information about the site. Typically, this takes around 10 minutes or so. And I'll just walk you through it just to make it super simple. So first thing is site name. So just put the site name in, site number one, postcode. So put a postcode in. I would recommend you then highlight it and copy the postcode because what we do as well is we, um, we request that you provide a what three words location to access the site. This is very handy for providing accurate information to a supplier to instantly find the site. So what you would do here is click on this link and that opens up what three words. And then what you can do is you can search for the site by pasting in the postcode. Here is the site and then you can just change the location. So if you know that this is the access, you can just click on there and that is the three word for the access. So just copy. As soon as you've copied that, you can just paste it back in here and it'll instantly pin the exact location of the site, which is the information that we will then pass on to all the suppliers once they're successful. This bottom bit here um, requests you to provide the information of uh, who, would, who you would like to be named as a client. So this might be yourself, or if you're acting on behalf of a client, it should be them. So essentially, whoever is the end client, you can then put their name in here. What happens then is all of our suppliers are notified, and when they do their reports, they will mention uh, the end clients for liability purposes. It's very important. So client X, Y, Z, and try and put a full full name in there for that client. Continue. Now, some extra information. Is the site open to the public? Yes or no? If, if the site is open to the public, then you click yes. That means that site access is very easy. If site access is not open to the public because it's fenced off and there's a lock, then click no. And then you will. this will open up, which means that you need to provide some information about the contact person on site. So for example, write their name. email, phone number, um, mobile preferable so that our suppliers can contact them if there's any emergency or, or need. And then access instructions to, um, to the site premise. So essentially, if you need, if you need the suppliers to meet your um, contact anywhere, or if you need them to pick up the keys or whatever it might be, here is a good place to, to provide that information. So please pick up keys at XYZ location. Or you might say, please call John on arrival. Up to you, depending on the site. And I park on site, yes or no. It's just good for the supplier to know and, and plan themselves. What's the site area? So if you've got a total area of the site, please fill it in here. Confirm your development class. So what we mean by development class is the planning development classes. So minor, non-major or major. To see a guidance on what all of these mean, you can click on here. Um, I'll just choose non-major for now. How accessible is the site area? So what we mean by this is when you're on the site, how accessible is the site? So you've got a few options. Easy access across the whole site, medium difficulty to access the whole site, or high difficulty to access the whole site. And essentially, just to give you an example, if there's a if your site is a green field, then it's super easy access. You've got visibility across the whole site. But if, for example, there's lots of shrubbery, there's lots of trees, there's lots of buildings, and you've got to walk in between them, then it's high difficulty to access the site. So please have a view on, on providing that information. So you might say easy access to the whole site. Are there any buildings on the site? Yes or no. So 
If no, then that's fine. If yes, then an extra pop-up opens up and we need to know kind of the approximate footprint of the site buildings. So this is all of them combined. So all of the site buildings combined and there's a ranges. So just have a view on what you think that might be and select the range that you require. And then the next one is to confirm your flood zone. So um, flood zone one, two, or three. And if you want support on, on identifying that, then click here, put the location of the site with a postcode and it'll tell you what the, um, what the flood zone is. So let's say flood zone two for this one. How many trees are there on or in close proximity to the site? Um, so on this one, there's a range. So take a view. You might know this or you might have to take a view on it and then select the range that you feel is appropriate. How many land registry title deeds are included within your site boundary? Um, so this is important for, for the legal costs um, that we'll get back for you and just select them based on this range. So you might say one or two to five or whatever it might be. Cool, once you've completed that, continue. And now you're in the next section. What we need to know now is what the current site use is. So you might say it's currently class B industrial. Um, you can also select multiple. So you might say it's also, it's industrial, but it's also got a shop or whatever it might be. Then click continue. And now we wanna know what the proposed site use is. So you might say proposed site use is residential institutions and and hotels, whatever it might be. Cool, click continue. And now here we provide some key information. So you've pretty much done all the, all the, all the things that were needed. Here we're just saying um, a key note about land contamination phase two that we will only recommend you do land contamination phase two after you do land contamination phase one um, because we need to do land contamination phase one to know if you need phase two. And also you want to try and do the geotechnical and land contamination phase two at the same time. So what we're going to try and do is we're, we're going to combine those to try and make it cheaper for you and your clients. Cool. Once you have a chance to read that, click I understand. Then this list here basically highlights all the surveys that it recommends that you do on this site. So if you answered slightly differently, for example, if you said that there was no buildings on the site, then the asbestos survey would be unticked. And if you said, for example, that there was no trees on the site, then the tree survey would be unticked. So it depends on how you answer. But here you've got a chance to adjust any of these. So remove anything that you think you might not need. But essentially right now what we're doing is we're just providing you with quotes. So you might as well have as many of these as possible so you can get all the, all the cost back. As soon as you click continue, you will now need to upload some documentation. So here we've got red line boundary. So you can click on here and upload your red line boundary. I'm just putting some uh, dummy documents in. Uh, title of ownership, if available. Design documents, if available. So if you've got any design documents, it's really handy to give context to the suppliers. So I would recommend adding, adding them in if you can. Then um, development proposals. So this is to give context. So here you can ex explain what you're what you're looking to build. So um, twenty two story homes and a community center. Any other relevant documents that, that you'd like to attach, or anything anything else? So more design documents or, or other, and then. You click on there and you submit. So as soon as I click submit, now the site has been uploaded onto the platform. And here what happens is some of the surveys require some additional more technical information. So for example, residential noise survey, geotechnical, land contamination phase two. So what it's asking here is that do you still want to be doing these? Because if you do want to get the quotes, then we need this information. So for example, for residential noise survey, we would need the number of microphones that you require on site and a description of a safe place to store the microphones. For geotechnical, we need number of boreholes, falling head tests, filtration tests, so a lot of information there. And for land contamination phase two, 
we need the number of boreholes and gas and ground monitoring if you require that or not. So what you can do is if you click continue, you can then upload all that information. But if you don't want to do that right now, you can just remove the survey. So for example, I can just remove these, continue. Now, if you go back to the dashboard, you'll be able to find your site. So for example, here on the dashboard, there is your site, site demo one. If you click on it, then what you'll see is if you click tender report, you'll be able to see all the prices compared to three prices for every single survey. And if you want to instruct any of these, you just come back to this view, click on that specific survey, and you can review all the individual suppliers and select anyone that you would like to instruct. So for example, flood risk, topo survey, and this is all dummy data. Um, but when you upload your site, you'll have all the live data. And as soon as you click on any of these, you will it will highlight which ones are, are the, rec the ones that you've selected. And you'll have them all up here ready in the checkout for you to instantly instruct. Cool. So that's how to upload a site, instantly get three prices and instruct your surveyors. If you need anything else from us, please feel free to, uh, to reach out. Thank you.